Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Pick up your logo merchandise by heading over to abvnetwork.com, clicking on shop, and start filling your basket today. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for something for yourself, a customized gift, or logoed items for your business gift shop, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. That's the number two in the bar to go. Don't forget our friends at Neely Family Distillery now ship their unique distilled spirits directly to you. To order yours, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we kick off a new Getting to Know the ABV Network Saturday series, where I interview Steve about something new happening on the ABV Network. Today, we're focusing on Bourbon Assignments, Steve's new book. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley. Hey, McNew. What's up? Hey, Steve. What's going on? Not much. Yeah, exciting times. I can't wait to talk about the book and all that's going on with it and uh, answer any questions you have about it and hopefully get some people interested in it. I mean, that's a, that's a cool thing. I'm excited. You- I think this is a good series because we have like 500 things going on. So it helps people catch up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think this is important because I just look at all the stuff and sometimes I lose track of, are we, are we promoting this and doing that? Because we've got right, so many things going on. The company is huge, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, so I, we just want to put awareness out there. So the next, I, I think you and I put together eight different show ideas, so the, for sure the next yeah. eight Saturdays, and if things come up, we could extend that until we kind of get through all these things, so should be pretty mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about a book today. Have you ever thought about writing a book, McNew? Because you do a little bit of writing now. Have you thought about Yeah, so I kind of want to do... And not necessarily horror, but something like weird and creepy. So, so, so it would be, it, is it more a, a novel or a series of short stories or what's going to be your take on this? See, here's the, like I'll, I start writing things all the time and then like, I don't, I hit a wall and then I stop. So I honestly think like shorts, like a series of short stories might be better than a whole novel. Cause then I get in it. I'm like, well, that doesn't even make sense anymore. Or it just seems weird to right. me. So I, to do the short story route honestly yeah yeah so there's several things you can do with the short stories you can (laughs) release them individually um you know and and that's more conducive towards like a kindle or something like that right um i would encourage you to though build a collection and release it as a book whether it's paperback or i saw self-publishing now you can also through amazon which is great i know there's different ways to self-publish you can always get hardbound books or hardback books but Okay. Now you can get that through Amazon self-publishing, which is cool. So oh, that's, that's cool like, too. That's like a big, because I always thought, man, one day I want to write a conventional book that goes through a publisher so I can have a hardback you know, book. And mm-hmm. now because Amazon does it, I don't think there's ever a scenario that I'd ever want to go to a traditional publisher. And Amazon's nice because you have full control over whatever you want to do with it. So you don't have to listen to an editor or a publisher. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, or, or, you know, they don't really do anything for it, which happens a lot of times is they don't really do anything for you. They publish it. Yes. But then they want you to do all the marketing of it and promote it. Now that's not, I'm not saying that's what they do with Stephen King or big, big authors. Obviously they fully promote those and get behind them, but I'm talking about somebody relatively unknown like myself or you. They're not going to, they're not going to put a a bunch of money into advertising it. They expect you to do that. And you know, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and then they take like ninety eight percent of the money too. By the way, right. so uh, you know, uh, the self publishing route is the way to go because mm-hmm. you can get it anywhere. I mean, 
they they get it where you know if you're like well it'd be a dream to have it in the local library but they do it that's that's included the library distribution is included um yeah. you know what well what about the local bookstore i mean there's still some of those yeah they amazon publishing goes to the, to the local bookstore right. as well so people buy my books i see that all the time it's called expanded distribution which that mm -hmm. means it's outside of just selling through amazon and their channels it's uh people like bookstores buying that and oh. get reports that shows you yeah that that you know how many how many books you sold outside of the amazon network that oh that's nice so i think the reason like you give up control to anything is if netflix came knocking and they're like hey we want to make a series out of your book i'd be like write me that check and do what you want with it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's the kind of things where yeah yeah it, it all comes down to money i guess to where it's yeah. if they give you enough to just lose the the control then then yeah then i guess right. that's what you do but beyond that i'm i'm really about owning what you do and mm -hmm. and making the money off of it i i don't feel like you know all the hard work of writing all those short stories mcnew and uh, because it's a dream to write a book, a lot of people will turn that over. That that, that the dream is to publish the book, and right. and in reality, you know, they end up making you know, uh, for a great book, you know, a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars maybe, uh, whereas right. they they could have made you know tens of thousands if they would have uh, done it themselves, which is cool. Yeah, I think people just don't know, so now they know. Yes. Yeah. And you know, you can also do pretty good by yourself. I've had uh, the best-selling bourbon book on uh, on Amazon before. So mm -hmm. those things happen. I, I, you know, I beat the big publishers if you look at it that way. And I, you know, my right. new book, uh, as we'll talk about here, it's doing pretty good. I, uh, it's on the hot uh, seller list in the liquor category. Uh, so it's kind of it's cool right now. Yeah, it's so, exciting. Yeah, very cool. So, all right. Before we get to that, though, McNew, it is at this point just a regular show. So we drink. What do you drink in there? I'm going to do right. some Maker's 46. Maker's 46. Okay. That was actually pretty good. I've got uh, Jack Daniels. Just This is a single barrel here. Uh, this was done by Sip Whiskey. Sip Whiskey, the online retailer. Here we go. All right. No, not enough. Not enough. You got it there, McNew. How about that? All right. All right. That? All right. Well, cheers. Cheers. Right. All right, well, what we'll do. Oh, oh shit. That was way ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what we'll do next, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, it is going to be time to talk about my new book. We'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, and let's talk for a moment about our sponsors, the people that make this show happen. First up is our friends at Moonshine University. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification at their office in Louisville. The information I learned through lead instructor Colin Blake and their team there is something that I continue to draw upon frequently in my role at the ABV Network. It truly is the standard of establishing a benchmark of knowledge of the bourbon industry. From history to production to brands and people, it's all there. Check out their full listing of programs, including Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, production classes if you're considering starting a distillery, and much more at moonshineuniversity.com. I also want to talk about Neely Family Distillery. Back in May of 2018, I met Royce Neely at Limestone Branch's Craft Bourbon Festival. It ended up not only being the start of a great friendship, I started to truly learn about what makes craft whiskey so amazing. You see, I had been a bourbon drinker for over 30 years at that point, and like many people who had been drinking bourbon a long time, I was hard-coded into thinking Big Bourbon was where it was at and Kraft was on a journey to get there. Spending time with Royce and learning the things he does to make his whiskey taste better started to really get me to appreciate how things like sweet mashing, open-top fermentation, pot distillation, and the grains you are using not only makes your product taste better coming off the still, but also out of the barrel as well. I still love heritage brands and they make up a bulk of my collection. But when you find a craft distiller that is truly dedicated to the craft of distilling, you are drinking some of the best whiskey out there on the market today. That's exactly what's happening at Neely Family Distillery today. Check them out on the web at neelyfamilydistillery.com, or better yet, stop by and see them at their distillery in Sparta, Kentucky. And now, back to the show. Hi, this is Rick Brenner, and you are listening to the Bourbon Daily. 
Shouldn't it be the legend? Yeah, maybe. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're talking about Steve's new book. Yes, we are. And the format of the show is McNew goes to journalism school. So you you get to uh, <laughs> ask the questions, McNew. All right. Hopefully what it's great yeah. journalism on my part. But so we do, you do have a new book called Bourbon Assignments, and it's already yes. number 34 the last time you posted on the Amazon's hot new releases. So congrats on that. Yeah, thank and you. I think it's a cool concept of a book. So tell the audience about the whole concept. Yeah. So, I mean, I hadn't written a book in three years, which is uh, pretty amazing to think about because I was incredibly proficient at writing books. I, I've got 50 different, 20, uh, I think 28 books in my catalog and then short stories and stuff like that. I think I, I've got over 50 items in my catalog that I started in 2013. And so that was uh, oh, the five years of 2013 to 2018 is when I, I put all of that uh, out. And then I wrote one more book in 2018, which was one I had started during the proficient time and finished. Uh, it's kind of on the history of 10 great bourbon cocktails. Nice. So that one was kind of in the works and it, it was finished in 2018, but I really haven't focused any time on writing. And I decided to change that earlier this year. I thought I'm, I've got an idea for a book and I want to just spend some time. So I took a week off of work and just worked on the book. I was in, went to Kentucky and visited a bunch of places. And I got this idea of this kind of travel guide, but which has been done. But I thought, because so many people ask me what they should do when they go to Kentucky, I'm not going to just point them in the direction of going to a place. I'm going to tell them what to do when they get there. So mm -hmm. I, I like, you know, people always ask, you know, where, where can I buy a cool bottle? I, I'm like, I like to go to Heaven Hill. And here's what you need to do. You need to get in line before they open up and then, you know, buy at the, as soon as they open at the, at the gift shop. So that would be something you do when you go to heaven Hill, or I always like to give the bourbons bistro example. If you go yeah. to bourbons bistro, it's, it's great to go there, but order the pork chop because it's the best thing on the menu and uh, get a wild Turkey one one rye because it's a, a great value. So if you do those things, then when you go there, you get points and those points then add up. And what do you get with the points? You get a big prize. Uh, well, not a cash value prize, but <laughs> we're going to talk to you and I, uh, or you, uh, uh, myself and Becca, depending on what night we record on, we're going to talk to 10 of these individuals that, uh, that, that did this next year. So basically you're adding up their scores throughout the course of the year. And at the end of the year, the end of 2022, the 10 highest scores we're going to invite on to come on the bourbon daily and tell their stories from traveling around and doing the different things in uh, bourbon assignments. So that should be kind of fun, I think. Yeah, so I think it's a cool idea and it's more fun than just a passport, right? Because anybody can get one of those and just right. go check things off. But what is the top or best score someone could possibly get? Um, yeah, boy, I, I don't know off the top. <laughs> I should have brought a copy of the book with me. I do. I did not bring that up here. It's it's high. It's like uh, 2000 points, I think, or something like that. Wow. So it's way up there. It's way up there. Yes. That's cool. And so do these have to be done in any specific order for the assignments or if it's just, Hey, I'm in Louisville or I'm in Lexington, they can do whatever is convenient for yes. them. There, there's no, there's no uh, rules about when you can do it. Matter of fact, I, I view like the time right now, for, or here we are in October, October to December as bonus time, because in reality, it's kind of set up to be what you should do in 2022. So if you get things right. knocked out now, you're ahead of the game for 2022. So it's really a, the, the quicker you buy the book, the faster you are getting started on, you know, racking up those points. So, you know, if you're, if you're waiting, you're like, well, this is a great Christmas gift. It is. And we yeah. certainly want people to give it for Christmas. But if, if you get it before Christmas, you can start adding up points right now. Yeah, that's exciting too. So this book, there was a dedication to Freddie Johnson, and there's also a foreword by Bernie Lovers. So these two, the industry loves them. What do they mean to you? And especially to have them included as the, in part of this book. Yeah. So, you know, two different people and, and uh, both mean a lot to me. So Freddie Johnson, uh, he and I just have this personal connection. Uh, you know, I was just a fan of his and I, you know, I, I guess I took my fandom to the next level by getting involved in, in the push to get him into the Kentucky bourbon hall of fame. I hate, I hate the fact that I am associated with that because I have nothing to do with Freddie Johnson being in the hall of fame. It's all based on his work, 
but sometimes awareness does help these things. And that's where, well, that was my role to, you know, increase the awareness of this guy needs to be in there and here's why lining it out. And if you read through all the stuff we wrote about Freddie at that time, how can you keep him out? I, I mean, clearly he belongs in the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame. So we've just had this connection and, and, you know, we've been very close since then. And, you know, the night that uh, he went to the Bourbon Hall of Fame, uh, he sent me a text and said, you know, hey, doesn't matter what happens from this point forward. You and I have this uh, together and we are connected for life, which was cool. So, yeah, to dedicate the book to him, I just feel like is the perfect thing because he has created so many bourbon fans himself. I don't know of any individual that is more responsible for creating bourbon fans than Freddie Johnson. If you think about all the tours that he's done in the you know, decade plus he's worked for for Buffalo Trace, uh, it amazes me to, to think about the numbers are just crazy when all those tours and all those thousands of people and the way he is, uh, he pulls people into bourbon. If you, if you're just a, a casual fan who enjoys a sip of bourbon from time to time, um, and you go on a Freddie Johnson tour, you are suddenly like us, McNew. you're, you're, you're all in, you want to know everything there is to know about bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> that type of guy. And then yeah. Bernie, Bernie just to me, is the ultimate story of someone doing what I'm attempting to do. Barney really is, is a guy who mm -hmm. blazed the trail on this is how you, you know, you have a love for bourbon, you create a job for yourself and you fully immerse yourself into that and you make yourself accessible. I, I, I think Barney is everything that I wish I could be in this business and hopefully one day I can get to 50% of his level and I'll uh, have accomplished a lot of, I feel, I mean, he just is a guy who promotes his brand in the best way possible. And at the same time, that also promotes the industry. He's got a positive attitude about everything. He's open to, and being available. He just doesn't say no to things. If it's something that uh, involves bourbon fans and, and helping and promote the industry or his brand, he, he does it. And, and you think about that time, uh, there's no greater testament to that when we did a thing on the Bourbon Daily and we did uh, uh, a bracket challenge where whoever won the bracket challenge, you were going to try to interview on your show. And yeah. Bernie ended up winning that. And he said, yes. You know. He did. And I was so surprised because it was when I was doing wine time and I was kind of just wrapping it up, honestly. But he came on and he was fantastic. And I was like, this man is so positive and he shouldn't have anything to complain about, but he was awesome on that show. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of weird because, you know, I got to approach him then and I got to be like, okay, Bernie um, McNew does a show. <laughs> it's where she drinks wine. So you won't be drinking bourbon. You'll be drinking wine yeah. and you go on there and you just complain about stuff. And it, it, to me, it was struck me as funny because Bernie's not a guy who complains about it. He doesn't whole. complain. No. Yeah. So, but he came on and he did a good job. He, he, he brought up some things, you know, complain about airports and airlines and travel and all that. Yeah. It's like, ah, yeah, yeah. He's right on. And then people who have convertibles, but don't put their top down. Cause I just got one and I pass people and I'm like, what is the point of having it? So he <laughs> felt the <this> way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he was cool. And I, so I asked him to do it. And once again, like so many other things, he said, yes, he would be willing to do it. And he wrote a really fun forward for me. And I'm really proud of that and, and proud to have him on the cover of the book. So it's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And so it, they are assignments, but if somebody said, Hey, Steve, I have 24 hours. I'm in Louisville. What two things should I do out of this book this weekend? Okay. So they're in Louisville. They, they, they only have, they only could do two things. I would say the two things that I would do, I would go to old Forester and tour that it just gives a complete view of the entire process from, it does. Yeah, yeah, from starting uh, well, even before what you're going to see it, they have great history that you get into. And then you see the entire production process all the way down to barreling, which you don't see anywhere else. They have the cooperage on site, which is kind of cool. They're making, you know, one barrel a day or whatever they make there. Yeah. It's, it's pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, and then, then it's dinner time and I would go to bourbon's bistro. Um, I would make that trek. I just feel it's iconic. I feel it's one of the best bourbon bars in the world. The opportunity to meet Jason Bronner. It's uh, you know, he's a true bourbon celebrity. And he's probably the world's most accessible bourbon celebrity because every night that place is open, usually he's about seven or eight o'clock after he, you know, kind of has his, his family time with his kids, dinner, and then and spend some time with him, which I think is a great family person, the thing to do. But then he comes into the bar, like I said, about eight, and he's there till close every night. I, I mean, you can't be more accessible than that. So come in, see him, 
have a drink, rack up some points, and uh, maybe you get invited. If you talk to him, you just might even get invited to his office where he's got the really cool stuff, the, the yeah. vintage whiskey and that. And that's one of the assignments in the book, too. It's a bonus one. If you can get those points, <laughs> uh, it'll help you out for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. So this is pretty Kentucky based. You're going to spend some time in Colorado, though. Do you think there'll be Colorado bourbon assignments in the future? Uh, that could be. I, I am going to be spending quite a bit of time in Colorado next year. So I'm thinking of probably about two weeks. So maybe maybe that could be a part of a sequel. I haven't decided. I haven't decided if if I start expanding it out to, to other areas, McNew, like have a Kentucky one and a Colorado one, or mm -hmm. I do what I've done for the next year, because this is going to be a series and yeah. is one of the assignments you know, take a, uh, a, you know, a side trip and it's, it's Colorado. Then I, then I, you know, and I think that's probably where it'll fit in. It'll, it'll fit in, in, in this book, but it's also, it's about expanding your horizons. And I, you know, I, the way I see this book each year is having some the same, but also having some new ones in there as well. So I need to, I need to mix it up a little bit every year and, but probably keep about half the same. And and then, then I feel like these are modules that may come back. It may, I may take bourbon's bistro off the list, you know, one year, but then uh, in, in future years, that doesn't mean it's gone for good in future years, uh, you know, other editions, I could bring it back. So that's kind of, that's kind of the plan. Yeah. I like the difference here because like you can have some 2022 winners and then 2023 can be totally different people doing different things. I like this. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a fun thing. It really is. And to me, McNew, it's, it's bigger than just a, a book for me. It's, it truly is a way to give back because a lot of people have helped me along like Jason Bronner, the bourbon's beast or the guy helped me a lot in doing what I'm doing because he allowed me to stay at his place at a time when the company really didn't have any money. I didn't have money. I, my, my, the, the, my severance package from work is what, what I was living off of. It was starting mm -hmm. to dwindle. And, uh, you know, at, at some point that was going to run out and I'm spending, you know, all this money on either hotels or Airbnbs. And it, it was going to stop me from going to Kentucky as much as I did, which really helped establish what the company is. So he let me stay there for free. And it's for, so now it's a way for me to give back to all these companies that have helped me along the way uh, by pointing out what's so great about them and why you should go and visit these places and what you should do when you're there. So you get the total Colonel Steve experience. Yeah, I think that's awesome, Steve. Um, let people know where to find it and then we'll wrap up the show. Yeah, it is uh, available on Amazon. So check out amazon.com. You can look for bourbon assignments. If you don't find it there, uh, so far it's been low in the search. So it, it has to really start selling and, and it is starting to sell now. So hopefully that's going to pick up soon. But if you can't find it anywhere else, just head over to abvnetwork.com. I've got it right on the main page. You can just click on it right there. It'll take you specifically to Amazon where it is at and you can find it there. Awesome. All right. So anything from you, McNew, where can people find you? Yep, I am on Instagram at McNew ABV. All right, for me, of course, I'm an easy guy to find at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've got the important website, though. That's abvnetwork.com. Not only is the book out there, so much more shops out there as well as our old shows. So check us out at abvnetwork.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV network. All right. Great job today. Uh, McNeil, really appreciate it. And of course, for our audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. And then a week from today, we will have another getting to know the ABV network where we'll talk about our bourbon Sasquatch channel on YouTube. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. See you. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's chat for a moment about Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you just want to experiment on a small scale on the stove in your kitchen or try your hand at a bigger setup in the backyard, Moonshine Still Pro can help. They have different still offerings as well as accessories and even grains from Goldstone Mill to help you make whiskey on par with what you get from your favorite distillery. They can even assist with a DIY still project by supplying some of the parts you can't make yourself. Check them out at moonshinestillpro.com. At the ABV Network, we're lucky enough to have some great friends. Amongst those friends is the Goldstein family, owners of Goldstone Mill.
Goldstone Mill is a full-service mill offering a variety of heritage and heirloom grains. Their unique approach of working with mills around the country allows them to offer you affordable shipping opportunities to meet the unique needs of your distillery or brewery. They will consult with you to ensure the grains you are selecting meets the unique flavor profiles you are looking for. If you are a home brewer or distiller and you're looking for the grains that your local distillery or brewery uses, Goldstone Mill is the place to look. Check them out on the web at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or shoot them an email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.